Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. I'm Trace. This is our fifth episode in our series on the history of science. This is a podcast style show. If you're unaware, if it's your first time joining us, welcome. We take one topic and we break it into five different chunks for you so that we can all understand it a little bit better. And we've talked a lot about science over the past week, so make sure you watch all five of those episodes. We talked about where it came from, who's been doing it, what science even is, and some of the times that science has kind of veered off course into some bad, bad stuff. It's kind of weird. Head transplants and it's messed up. Anyway, go watch it. It's cool. Um, the question today, though, is does science ruin stuff? I have been on DNews now for a while, more than two and a half years. If you don't watch DNews and you just found Test Tube Plus, awesome. That's so cool. Please check out DNews. It's great. But it's shorter, a little. And when we do these things, everyone sends them to their friends and they say, you ruined this. <laughs> you ruined this thing. You know. For example, things that I have ruined in the last couple of years. We're never going to have dinosaurs. Jurassic Park's not happening because the DNA inside of the mosquitoes inside of the amber doesn't last long enough. DNA only lasts for a few tens of thousands of years. We're barely going to get mammoths if we get them at all. Dinosaurs, that DNA is gone. It's degraded so badly that it's, it's over. Superheroes. Ruined those, because you know what? Radioactivity does not give you superpowers. It just kills you. That's what it does. Kills you. So lightsabers, we're not going to have those either. There are, there's never going to be lightsabers, at least as way, the way we understand physics right now. Lightsabers, by the way, are arc wave energy generated plasma contained by a force field. I learned that as well. Never going to happen. We've also ruined some things that are a little less kind of out there science fiction-y. Love and partnerships. A lot of people say that science has kind of ruined love for them. Not that it, they don't get it, but explaining it too much can almost make it seem less magical. And that magic is what people like in life sometimes. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. I'm just reporting the science. But science isn't doing it either. Science is trying to understand the world around it. The method of science is the way that we understand our world. And a lot of times, you know, that ends up ruining things that we, the beliefs that we held. For example, there was a study that the belief in a soulmate actually makes your relationships like worse. It ruins them. Because if you believe in a soulmate, then this relationship is either your soulmate or nobody. And that can hurt your relationship. It's not, a, it's not a good way to look at it. It can also be pitted against religion a lot, which we've talked about on Test Tube Plus, uh, and that is the God versus science debate. But I'm not really on board with that debate. I don't think that it's as much of a debate as people think it is, in that a lot of people who practice science are religious. And a lot of people who are religious like science. So it's not really so much a debate that one or the other ruins the other. You know, you could argue that, yes, we've been above the clouds, so we know heaven isn't sitting on that thing. But at the same time, you can use science to say we don't have the answer to that question. And that's really the basis for faith and for beliefs in general are you can't answer it, you can't know. So, you know, nobody knows scientifically what happens after we die. So who's to say one's right or the other's not right? Under science and the scientific method, we can hypothesize, but we can't theorize because we don't have a collection of proven hypotheses, right? Check that out. It's important. So here's some more science buzz kills that we've done. Sharing your bed with a dog or cat is bad because, you know, creates all sorts of potential disease crossovers, as well as if you do die in your sleep, your dog or your cat's going to eat you. It's going to happen. Not one or the other more likely. They're, gonna, they're animals. They're going to eat you. There's also snacking on raw cookie dough. That's bad because there's raw eggs, and raw eggs can transmit salmonella. Salmonella can then kill you. It's delicious, but science has ruined that for you too. It can go on forever. Exercise is not going to help you lose weight by itself. iPhones and iPads and tablets of any kind, a TV right before bed, although they might be relaxing, the blue light is going to keep you awake and ruin everything. Tanning is bad for you. This one everybody knows. But it used to be thought maybe that, you know, being outside in the fresh air was good for you, but, you know, you're also, as uh, the editor-in-chief of discoverynews.com said to me once, there is literally only one thing that we know of 100% is a carcinogen, and that is the sun. Think about that for a minute. 
Science ruined tanning or laying on the beach, I guess. Um, in the end, science doesn't necessarily just ruin things. I mean, by all of those things that I mentioned, that doesn't ruin having pets, it doesn't ruin love, it might ruin our ignorance of some of these things, but it just becomes like, do I care that I might get sick if my dog stays in my room? Of course I don't. I've never gotten sick before. If I get sick in the future, at least I'll know that it could have been caused by this dog or helped cause. And then I can answer that question and try and figure out what the problem is as opposed to just being like, oh no, I'm sick all of a sudden. It's actually a good thing. Science opens up a whole set of amazing possibilities that have never been seen before. And there's so much beauty in that. I mean, think of, think of space. Before science, we looked at space and we thought it was beautiful, but we didn't know what it was. We didn't understand it. And space sometimes makes people feel small. And there's discussions like instant communication, which was created by scientists, have made the world a smaller place. But if anything, it's made it a more beautiful place because we understand so much more about it. For example, the light from the stars has taken billions of years to reach us in some cases. Your you know, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, Neanderthals, dinosaurs didn't exist. And there are stars that their light is just now hitting us. And you know, some people think about it this way. Your dead ancestors are looking at the same sky as you. And they saw the same things. That's pretty incredible. Neil deGrasse Tyson says, the universe is something you participate in. It's a great unfolding of a cosmic story. I think that should make people feel large, not small. Any astrophysicist does not feel small looking up at the universe. We feel large. Why? Because we're all part of this huge thing. So shouldn't you feel like you're a big part of that? Science has brought that in. There's a lot of terms we throw around in science communication, which is what they say that I do. And, you know, the words like wonder and curiosity and awe and inspiration. And they can sound kind of hollow from time to time, but when you think about science, it really does hit all of those touch points, right? Science makes people feel inspired to go and do things. It makes people feel a sense of awe. You can look at a huge mountain and feel a sense of awe, but doesn't knowing that that mountain used to be under the surface and that it might have been jammed up there by a huge earthquake or something over millions of years and, you know, billions of animals and plants have lived and died on that mountain. Doesn't that make the mountain more nuanced and more wonderful, not less? I think more. Uh, Robin Insee, I'm not sure how to pronounce the, Insee's last name, Robin's last name, had a TED talk that said, the more we learn about the astonishing behavior of the universe, the more we stand in awe. I think that's a great, that's a great quote. I've said it before. I don't know about you guys, but the more that I learn about the universe and the more science that is done to explain the world around me, the more questions I find I have and the harder I want to look. The deeper we delve into, you know, here's a human, here's a cell, here's a part of a cell, here's an atom in a cell, here's the things that make up atoms, here's the things between the things that make up atoms, I just want to know more. I just get more excited. And science is a way for us to find those answers. It's not the answer. It's just a way for us to find those answers. So let's bring this back a little bit. Aristotle, ancient dude, great thinker, terrible scientist, he believed that two objects that fall in a vacuum, the heavier one would fall faster. So if you could suck all the air out of a tube and drop a feather and a bowling ball, they would fall at different rates even without air in the way. He supposed, logically, made sense. And actually it does. It's sort of like that old pun, which is heavier, a ton of feathers or a ton of bricks. Logic would tell you it's equal, right? But Galileo said, nah, bro, science can be testing this, and it turns out that feathers and bowling balls in a vacuum fall at the exact same rate because there's no air in the way. And Aristotle had overlooked that, and he never would have gotten that answer. We never would know those things unless someone had tested and experimented and answered using 
science. Science is controlled investigation, it's experimentation, and it's not separate from abstract reasoning, and it's not separate from belief, and it's not separate from any of the things that we've talked about, but what it is is part of those things. It's important because it helps you answer your questions. Guys, we have really come a long way in these episodes. I mean, we went from like the eighth century all the way up to space and cosmology, and that's insane, and that's the history of science. And, and if it's not clear enough, you can go back and watch those episodes again. If you haven't watched all of the episodes from this series, check them out here. Make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus. I hope you enjoyed the history of science. Tell us what you think in the comments. I'll get down there and we can talk about it. And um, thank you for watching. You can also check out last week's episodes on viruses. And next week, make sure you come back because we'll be talking about more science right here on Test Tube Plus. I'm Trace. Thanks for tuning in. Wow.